Welcome to Quilt Central, where we celebrate quilting and everyday living. Our focus today will be on wearable art, and we'll take a look at how two designers do their creative clothing. We're going to follow their process from concept to quilting. We're glad you joined us, so stay tuned. Funding for Quilt Central has been provided by the American Quilter Society, dedicated to promoting today's quilter. Sulky of America, taking creativity to new heights with decorated threads, stabilizers, and books. Fairfield, maker of polyfill fiber fill, pillow, batting, and foam products. Paducah McCracken County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Paducah, where no one is a stranger. Quilting Machines International, providing quilting machines and supplies for the world. Free Spirit Fabrics, quilting fabrics with style. The National Quilting Association, a nonprofit association promoting quilting and quilters. Pennywinkle Valley Ranch, the home quilting system. Quilt Central, celebrating quilting in everyday living with your hosts Jane Donaldson and Donna Wilder. Over the last few weeks, we've been talking a lot about dressing up the home. Well, today we're going to talk about dressing ourselves. Our guest is going to talk a little bit about art to wear. Joining me is Jessie Beekman Smalley, and she is representing Fairfield Processing Corporation. Hi, Jessie. Hi, Donna. I'm so happy to be here. Well, I am glad you're here because I just love wearable art. And I know you've got your own company, don't you? Yes, I do. I am a garment designer. Uh -huh. And I love doing garments, but now I'm breaking into a little bit of quilting. Well, good for you. We like it when you become a quilter. Mm -hmm. You brought a garment with you today. Let's take a look at the model wearing that, and you tell me about this garment. Okay. Well, this garment, I started with a simple design, Donna. Mm -hmm. Uh, I Like I said, I'm just breaking into quilting, and a friend of mine taught me crazy patch quilting. Oh, it looks great. And I thought, well, I have to do a garment with this, so I started with this simple pattern, and I needed to get a yoke in so I'd have something to do my uh -huh. crazy patch on. Uh -huh. And from there, I kept looking, and I said, well, I want to express the fabric, so then I quilted the bottom, just mm -hmm. straight uh, wavy lines, and that's an acetate fabric. Yes. The top half is cotton. I like to mix all different kinds of fabrics together. And then I decided to just leave the pl uh, sleeves plain. Uh -huh. And then I said, well, you know, I could still add something, so then I decided to do a little something different with the buttons. I often work with my buttons. That looks great. And I I think you're going to talk about how you did all of this. Mm -hmm. How do you get started when you're making a design? Well, first uh, thing I do is draft my pattern. Okay. I'll start in a case like this with a real simple pattern design, mm -hmm. and this is just a plain front and back mm -hmm. and sleeves. Okay. And from this, then, I need to create a yoke area, right. so I'll have something to work with. So you work that independently, mm -hmm. okay? Yes. And um, then at that point, I need to um, cut out the yoke so I'd have something. And if you notice here, Donna, this particular pattern had a center back seam. Uh -huh. And I didn't want that center back seam in my yoke area, so right. I removed that. Plus, I needed to add my 5 8 seam allowance with me cutting the pattern okay. in half. Good. And I did it both front and back. And once that part was done, then I was ready to go ahead and start working okay. with um, the rest of my mm -hmm. garment. And then you created the bottom section to each one as well, yes. is that correct? Yes. So that you've then drafted the pattern so that they meet and you've got your 5 eighths inch again. Yes. Now normally quilters work with a quarter inch, mm -hmm. but when you're doing dressmaking, the standard... It's always 5 eighths inch. Five well, eighths I can remember that from my 4 H days. Yes. yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, let's take these away and show us how you get started with the fun part, which is the creative side of it. Okay. Well, there is a couple of ways. Sometimes um, I start off with uh, something like muslin, uh -huh. or what I'm finding now is this batting works wonders. Oh, this that's This batting great. works great. You can trace out the pattern, uh -huh. and then you can just work from, from uh, putting your pieces on right off of the batting. Of course, when you get through sewing it all down, 
it will have your pattern that you traced out right. covered, but it will allow you to know right where you need to uh, put your pieces down so that you know oh, that you have That's good, and then fabric. you're not wasting any. You're not wasting good. it, yes. And this is an all cotton, is that what you're that's using? That's an all cotton, yes. And that's nice because it breathes and yes. gives you that kind of warm in the s winter and mm -hmm. cold in the summer, yes. too. Yes, it's wonderful for garment making. Like I said, I'm having the time of my life now learning oh, to do good. quilting good. and incorporating that with uh, the garment making. So it will look pretty much Let's like put this, this out here a little bit. And uh, when you get through, and the fun part with this is any size scrap. Mm -hmm. You don't have to really cut them. You can just place them and sew them down. Uh -huh. And the big key to this, though, is pressing. Okay. You must continue to press and keep it nice and flat. Okay. And when you finish, you'll have a piece. Well, before you do that, Jesse, I noticed you left a couple of raw edges here. Is that okay? Yes, that's fine, because there is no way with this kind of piecing you'll ever be able to tuck in all of the edges. And you're going to come back later and do a lot of embellishment okay. on top of this. And that gives you lines to follow to okay. hold that down. And, um you use scraps or you use leftover pieces? Yes, so. I use scraps and this is when my girlfriend showed me this uh, particular um, way of doing this, I was so excited because I often have a lot of scraps left over and some fabrics I just love and I hate to get rid of them and this is a good way it's to use great. them. It's great. You know, I always think when you're cutting out the little neckline area, that tiny little mm -hmm. horseshoe shape, you can save all those pieces. Yes. Because yes. doing this technique, you can use them. You can use them. Well, let's see how you finish the embellishment then. Yeah. So once I got all of my pieces down, mm -hmm. then I just started at random to do just decorative stitching. Great. And I use the gold metallic. Uh huh. And for me, that stood out. But you could use anything. You can change threads. You can go any route. You, freedom. It's yes. total freedom with this. And you know, so many machines today have all these different decorative stitches. Oh, yes. And you can experiment and yes. do lots of different ones. Yes. Well, that looks great. Now, on this one, you've made it large enough for both your front and yes. back. Yes, and once I finish with all of the decorative stitching, then I'll be ready to cut my front and back piece. Great, okay. And so for the acetate, for the fabric, it was just plain fabric, mm -hmm. but it had this shine to it, and I thought, well, I want to follow through with the gold thread. Right. So I just did a little channel stitching, and now once I do enough, I cut on, uh, did enough of quilting to cut out my pieces, and so then I'll be ready to assemble my jacket. And you've got uh, another batting in between yes. here, so mm -hmm. that that gives it a little bit of loft, and yes. kind of accentuates all of that. Mm -hmm. Let's leave this piece here, because I want you to show me how you did those clever closures on oh, the jacket. Oh, yeah. Well, that's something I'm always sitting and, you know, <laughs> doodling, doodling and, and checking out. So I'm looking, and I just didn't really want to do buttonholes. So what so did you start with? I started off with just regular scrap, made it into a tube. Okay. And with this tube, then I fold it in half okay. and form my loop All for right. my button to go up. And mm -hmm. that, you just uh, measure the size button you're going to use. And then on top, I lay one piece on top of the other. But now I have this raw edge left, right. and I want to tuck that in, because I don't want that to show. So I take oh. this, fold it back, and now I just take thread, my gold metallic uh -huh. thread again, and I just wrap it around. And I continue to wrap until I get as much thread on there as I want. And it actually starts to look like I have a little metal um, piece like on it. Like a grommet or yes, something on it, whatever yes. they call those little rings. Mm -hmm. Isn't and that something? So then once I get it all shaped just the way I would like it, uh -huh. then I'm ready to just stitch it down on my jacket. Oh, and let's take a it. look at that on the garment. That looks mm -hmm. great. Yes. I'm amazed that they, you know, that it's so simple. I was wondering where you were going to hide that mm -hmm. other end. Mm -hmm. I thought maybe you made a circle first, but this is even easier yeah, to do than very, that. Very, very easy. Very easy. Good. And I'd like to try to find different ways of uh, making uh, closures. For well, that kind of distinguishes your look in the garment mm -hmm. rather than just the standard buttonhole that everything has. Mm -hmm. Well, I know you brought another garment, and let's mm -hmm. take a look at this one. Mm -hmm. This is quite lovely, too. This is, um, what kind of, fa it looks like men's suiting. Yes, this is a suiting uh, fabric with 20% um, wool. Uh -huh. And this, I decided to do embellishment. And I just cut fabric pieces and 
laid down and again I use the decorative stitching to hold that in place mm -hmm. and then I use the bound button uh, pockets and I did the same kind this of technique for the buttons for the closure. But I like the way you brought it to the back mm -hmm. and it kind of makes it look like a little hook yes, that's yes, hooking yes. over the button mm -hmm. there. Yes. Now, do you always do bound buttons, I mean uh, covered buttons, or do you like well, decorative ones? I like decorative buttons. I try to find unique and different things and buttons are one of the things that I do look for and build my garments around uh -huh. is the buttons. Uh -huh. And when I don't find quite the button, I want, then I try to make sure I do something with the closures. With Good. The well, let's turn this over. Does that have decorations? It's sort of the same feeling mm -hmm. on the back on of the this. Back of it. Yes. Now, if someone doesn't like to construct a garment, could they go and buy a jacket and do this kind of embellishing on it? Oh, sure, sure. That would be very easy to do, just a matter of cutting out their pieces and stitching them mm -hmm. down and then just doing the decorative stitching. Well, that's great. Well, you've had so many good ideas. I just want to thank you for joining us today, and good luck with all your uh, new designs, and keep on doing it. I think you're starting out just fine. Well, thank you, Donna. Some people think that you can't do small pieces on long arm, but you can, and I'm going to show you how and give you some tips on how to run pieces that aren't perfectly square either. Sometimes people want to run round pillow tops or vests that lay out flat. And you can actually pin the backing on with the batting, and then you can actually spray baste your piece to there. And this irregular shape can be outlined with a basting stitch with your long arm machine, and you can quilt it. Another thing that we found in quilted garments is that people don't use the tucks anymore to shape them. And we really have some vests and jackets that are more bell shaped, but we have found a way to give shape to the garment in the quilting method. One of the ways to give shape is to run long channels into the fabric and according to the thickness of the batting and how many hills and valleys you get, it pulls up like a piece of elastic and you can add shaping to a garment. Uh, we have seen them across the back of a vest where we, you would have a little tie or a little belt that they will put little channels in there and that will pull in like a piece of elastic. We've also used this bar kind of quilting or channel quilting on the outside edge of a quilt on the last border that might have not been measured and sewn to the quilt but maybe it got stretched and if we use bar kind of a quilting pattern on the outside edge it will pull that uh, quilt up and it will re-square it. So I'm going to show you a little bit about channel quilting here and I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about batting thicknesses because that's very important in order to get this elasticized feeling into your fabric. We have, if you use a very deep batting, it will pull up way more. And if you use a wavy line, it will pull up more. Now if you channel out maybe nine inches apart, you don't have much that pulls together. But as you move your channel lines in and you get to maybe three to one and a half inches, that's where you get your mass, maximum elasticity. Then if you channel one inch again, you pretty much flatten your piece out and you get that all back. So you really don't have too much when you channel that far apart. Now we like to have a little bit. This is a piece for a garment uh, in our show and I am going to mark some two inch marks or about, I guess one and a half would be about good on the side and that's how you mark for your channeling because as you roll along and quilt you actually your fabric shifts a little from right to left so it's good to have the marks right on the quilt then it's better to do that than it is to mark as you go and sometimes I even lay it out on the floor and mark there before I even put the piece on the machine so I know where I want to channel. Another thing about channeling in um, colored stripes. If you had pastels and you actually wanted the room to become more blue, you would channel the blue stripe down because the ones that are on the top of the puff show more, so you would have maybe a more pink or a more yellow looking room. But channeling down these certain stripes will diminish that color and bring forth the other. So I want to show you a little bit about channeling here because this is a garment that you may have seen in our program. 
but I always start on the edge, bring up my thread. Some of these machines actually have channel locks on them, which is a little magnetic lock, and it works very well to um, use that as a guide. Some of us use rulers and marks, and some of us just go by eye. Now, the channeling that you saw on the garment in this show had a wavy, natural look to it, and that's the one I'm going to do for you right now. I'm just going to do a couple rows of it so you can see. It's actually a freehand line, and the eye, actually, it, it's more pleasing to the eye to show that little bit of a wave. I'm going to stop there and I'm going to do a couple more. And then I'm going to show you how you can actually learn to run some sort of panel, uh, what they call panel design, which is a feather or a leaf of some sort right down the center of a channel and cut right through your pattern. Now I'm just going to do a little more of this. And I'm going to show you this nifty way of adding a leaf to this. It's especially, this pattern is for long arm and it is for running down these channels. I really like it in a lot of borders that are a little bitty too on patchwork quilts. Put that over there. Okay, I make a leaf shape like this and then I cut right through the middle and that becomes the vein to the leaf and I cut right through there and that adds quite a bit of detail and ornamentation to this quilt. Some people have called that the banana leaf because it's so long. But you could add meandering or scrolls or you can fill in with quite a few things down the channels. It makes for an absolute beautiful design. I think that um, you should do more garments on machines. You'd find them fast and easy and they're already pre-lined. Uh, we actually take batting and split it if we can to get a little bit of a thinner look. And we really enjoy the way that these quilted garments feel, of course, because I'm from Wisconsin. I love the warmth of them. So I hope you'll try to do some smaller pieces and some garments and use some of these channeling methods to shape the garments a little bit better to your shoulders and back. So take some time to embellish your garments. You can showcase your quilting on yourself. Culture and the arts are flourishing in downtown Paducah, Kentucky, and the hub of all this activity is the Market House, home to the Market House Museum, Market House Theater, and the Yeiser Art Center. The first Market House was a log building, built in 1836. Today's Market House was built in 1905, and originally was an open-air market. The museum houses relics from Paducah's past, and the theater offers local actors a chance to perform. But it is the Yeiser Art Center, founded in 1957 by Mary B. Yeiser, that is of particular interest to quilt and fiber art lovers. The center is the home each spring of Fantastic Fibers, a national invitational exhibit of contemporary fiber works using traditional and non-traditional methods. The works exhibited here each year include art quilts, embroidery, beadwork, wall hangings, sculptures, weavings, baskets, tapestry, and masks. Fantastic Fibers is not the only exhibit at Paducah's Yeiser Art Center. Typically, the center hosts anywhere from 8 to 10 major exhibits a year. In fact, since its founding in 1957, the center has presented more than 500 exhibits. 
But the Iser Art Center is more than just exhibits. The center sponsors programs, workshops, and classes on the creation, appreciation, and preservation of the visual arts for all ages. It is truly a valuable resource and contributes significantly to Western Kentucky's cultural health. It's really interesting how all of the quilts and the other fiber art pieces blend so well in this exhibit. Yes, and I was really impressed with the quality here. You know, Paducah should feel very proud of the Yeiser Art Center. It brings high quality art to the hometown venue. The creativity that we saw at the Yeiser Center continues with my next guest. Joining me is Joyce Drexler, who is with Sulky of America, and they manufacture threads and stabilizers. Welcome, Joyce. Donna, it's just wonderful to be with you. And I'm so excited about this project that Carol Ingram designed. It's a cameo effect, and I just think it looks beautiful the way that it's three-dimensional. I love the way you put all the colors together in the vest, too. It's great. It's also the cover on your book, Dimensional Concepts in Sulky, too. That's right. That's where the pattern is. Great, great. <laughs> and this is an exciting way to, to create a, a dimensional thread applique. Mm -hmm. And what we do to begin with is we have traced the design. And when you go to trace a design, Donna, it's really great to use the temporary spray adhesive and just spray your pattern, not the... Uh, the cutaway soft and sheer type stabilizer mm -hmm. that we do this on. Okay. We want to use this particular one because it's very stable to use. Good. And then we just colorize it with uh, fabric pens mm -hmm. and that gives us our pattern. Okay. We hoop that in a machine embroidery hoop because we're going to be doing this free motion. Right. And you know hand work is usually popped up uh -huh. this way, but for machine work you always do it the opposite so it's flat against the bed of your machine. Oh, of course, it makes yeah. sense. <laughs> and this is just beautiful rayon thread that then has been embellished over with an opalescent and what sliver like thread. And what kind of stitch are you doing Oh, on it's that? a side stitch free motion. Okay. That means you'll have it under the machine for this going side to side. And you're you're determining the gauge of what that exactly. is. Exactly. You go. just put okay. it on zigzag and you fill in by lowering the feed dogs. Okay. You become the action. And it's painted by numbers. Well, more or less. Yeah, yeah it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> this is adding the shadow area okay. with the copper like sliver. Yeah. And as you can see, we do cut it all the way out. Mm -hmm. And that soft and sheer really cuts away easily. Does it? But it also gives a very firm um, base to the thread, so you're not okay. having it jammed down into the throat plate as you're making it. Now the next step would be to uh, make a cameo effect on the back of a vest. We cut out a vest pattern, and we simply use a, an interfacing. Mm -hmm. We trace that off of the pattern so we know the circle size right. that we need. And uh, we have then cut out the inside with a, a pinking shear mm -hmm. so it'll turn easy. And then as it folds back, you'll then do a top stitch as you put okay. the uh, applique on. That's sort of the picture frame That's for the, the picture beautiful frame. work there. Exactly. Now this shows you how you create that background effect, uh -huh. the moon type of effect. And this is done with uh, organza that has been, uh, a fusible web is on the mm -hmm. back of it. And we fuse it okay. in layers uh, on top of each other. Mm -hmm. And because it's showing through the next layer, the next layer, it gives a, a little more depth to it. It, it does. It has a nice tonal effect there. So we do have the fleece under there as we do the stitching, just using the edge of the raw mm -hmm. um, organza to follow. That is a sliver-like metallic thread that we've used. Alrighty. The next step is to create the tree that you see, mm -hmm. and we have traced the tree uh, onto the water-soluble stabilizer that we have ironed two layers together. Oh, okay. That gives you a little more stability. A little more stability. We wanted to use that because we're going to have open areas in parts of the tree, oh, okay. and this will wash away when you're done. Good. And this shows you how the stitching appears as you go along and you just leave open thread areas, yeah. making sure you anchor the thread, uh -huh. and then you use, do a raised satin-like stitch. Uh, to give the three-dimensional look to it. And here's your finished tree. Wow. And then you just add leaves. You can either use a print mm -hmm. and make a satin stitch down the center, or you can draw your own leaves and put little sequins in. And you can do all of that satin stitching right in the hoop with the water-soluble stabilizer. And to create the curly cues, we simply stitched over a water-soluble stabilizer and then uh, and curled it, it on, a, on a squirrel. Yeah. And let's take a look once more. Those are those little curly cues that are kind of like a grape twig yeah, like that a comes grape out. Yeah. 
Well, it's amazing. It, it's so well put together and looks so professional. That's what I think is so outstanding. Well, thank you. And thanks for joining us. It's great. Visit the Quilt Central website at www.quiltcentraltv.com for more information on this program. This was one of my favorite programs because my mother was a clothing designer. You told me that and I know that must be where you get all your talent. We had such great projects though today, the jacket and the vest, and I think everything looks so elegant. But next time we're going wacky. We're going out to the deck and we're going to use the decorating theme of chickens. We'll see you then on Quilt Central.